Welcome back students. In this lecture I'm going to attempt to answer the question, what is an enterprise GIS? And in this lecture, as well as the next several lectures in this section, are kind of a 50,000 foot overview. We'll get down in the weeds in later sections of this course, but for now I think that it's important that you understand the big picture of what enterprise GIS is and how it works. The one word that differentiates enterprise GIS from traditional desktop GIS, in my opinion, is multi-user. Those users can be all in a single office, or they can be employees in your company that are spread out in other offices around the world. Or they can be users that have nothing to do with your company, that are using data that you have made available to them, or are helping you collect data, for instance, in a kind of crowdsourcing application. I once wrote an application that allowed people to add information about free places to camp around the country. But what makes an enterprise GIS multi-user? How is that different from the normal desktop GIS that we're used to? In an enterprise GIS, your data is stored in a separate database rather than your computer's file system. And this provides some important advantages, as we'll see. It allows us to use existing database technology and extend them for geospatial data. And this is huge because Esri may be a billion dollar company, but Oracle is a $40 billion company, and IBM is an $80 billion company, and Microsoft is a $120 billion company. And those companies have resources that Esri could only dream about, and database technology is a core part of all those businesses. If Amazon's website fails for a few hours, or Citibank's server gets hacked, it's national news, and there are billions of dollars at stake. So these companies hire the best people available and throw insane amounts of resources towards making sure that their databases are the best in the world, that they're powerful and secure and fast. So why wouldn't you want to use this existing technology with your geospatial data? Some of the advantages include multi-user access, as we've said. For reasons that we'll talk about later, it's not easy to allow true multi-user access to data stored in a file system. You can have multiple people reading the data, but you can't have multiple people editing and saving a file simultaneously. Enterprise GIS systems are also multi-platform. You can have people around the world accessing your data from a desktop GIS system or a web application or on a mobile device. It can be used on Windows, Mac, Linux, or any other operating system that has a compatible client. Like I said, there are billions of dollars at stake, so massive amounts of resources are dedicated to making databases secure, and likewise to making the database fast. It's an incredibly competitive industry, so they can afford to hire the most brilliant computer scientists in the world to optimize performance. Another big advantage is that databases are scalable. This means that they can grow with you. Small companies may simply run a database server on the same computer that runs their organization's file server, or they could implement an instance of a database server on a hosting service or in the cloud, and as they grow, they can add another computer or more bandwidth to optimize performance. They can even have multiple copies on servers around the world that are constantly syncing, so if one fails, the other can take up the slack instantly with no interruption in service, and this is known as replication. Or if they're using a hosting service or the cloud, they can simply order more resources to be added to their database. Many cloud services have the advantage of being elastic, which means that if your mobile app suddenly goes viral and you go from 10 users to 10,000 users overnight, the cloud service will automatically add resources to your database to compensate. Of course, they will charge you for that as well, so you may suddenly get stuck with a large unexpected bill, but the point is that you can grow as large as you need to relatively easily and without interruption. And so what are the disadvantages? Well, there aren't any really. Some might argue that performance may suffer because you're sending your data over a slower network connection, and in some cases that may be true. If you do a lot of number crunching with large amounts of data, you may find a decrease in performance if you continue with your standard tools, but you can also use the server, generally a more powerful computer, to crunch those numbers and thus the potential for increases in speed also exist. And the thing that makes this all work is something called client-server architecture. 
And what does that mean? Well, first let's think about the file-based architecture that we're all used to and comfortable with. We have a desktop GIS software running locally on our computer, and we access geospatial data stored in files on our local hard drive. Nobody else has access to our files, so we're kind of isolated and walled off from the world. Now, we may have those files stored on a file server or on a cloud drive, and other people may have access to them, but as we'll see, that also can create a lot of frustrating problems. And you run the risk of losing data or corrupting files, etc. It's really not a good solution, although for small organizations with only a couple users, it may work for a while without you experiencing any problems. But in an enterprise GIS, we store the data in a database server, and our database server is accessible via a network. It may only be available to others in your organization via the company's local area network, or it may be available anywhere in the world via the internet. But the central data store is the core of the enterprise GIS system, and your data has the potential to be accessed from many different clients on many different platforms from anywhere in the world, and that's pretty cool. So I'm going to stop here and let you think about this for a bit. And in the next lecture, we'll do a deeper dive into client-server architecture and what it means.